So the next talk is uh, by Service to Us. Uh, it's called Yoda. Actually, it would be nice to call it Yoga. Um, and all from, I think, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology. Thank you. Hello, so this is a joint work with uh, Vinay Rivero and Abhijit Anand from IIT Delhi. Uh, so, we, okay. uh, so several uh, blockchains allow execute, execution of immutable codes called smart contracts in it. Uh, using smart contracts, uh, two mutually untrusted parties can uh, agree on a pro program logic and whose execution will be uh, Correct execution will be guaranteed by the underlying blockchain. Blockchain, for example, parties can do fair exchange of goods or may uh, hold, held public auctions. Uh, so, correctness of uh, smart contract execution in blockchains are guaranteed by uh, re-executions. What happens is uh, when a miner uh, includes a, a transaction in the block uh, and then start mining on it. On uh, successfully mining the block, the miner broadcasts the block to the other members of the network. Uh, a second miner, say miner two, uh, on receiving the block, first validate each and every transaction in it, and then on successful validation, uh, it, it includes the transaction, it includes the block in its uh, local chain. So if we uh, look closely, what happens is the miner two will receive the block at time instant t zero and will spend uh, some amount of time validating header and transactions, and only after that it will start mining. So trivially. What happens if the uh, block contains transactions that are computationally intensive, the validation fa phase is large, and it delays uh, essentially the mining process. Uh, what happens is like in this situation, an honest miner faces a dilemma of whether to validate transactions in a block or simply accept uh, the block. Uh, currently, uh, major uh, blockchains uh, uh, like uh, handled a very fast dilemma by limiting the maximum amount of transaction, uh, maximum amount of computation a transaction can execute. Uh, like, uh, for example, Ethereum quantifies this using block guest limit, which limits Ethereum uh, from only executing around 500,000 instructions per second, which is uh, significantly lesser than GCC's uh, capability of executing billions of instructions per second. So, in uh, in putting it uh, in other words, like. Uh, this ver uh, verif verification by re-execution limits a blo blockchain from executing computationally intensive contracts. Uh, let's first ask, like, uh, what power does computationally intensive contracts and blockchain will provide? Like, it will enable blockchain to host uh, online games. It will also enable blockchains to, uh, for tools like uh, fully homomorphic encryption or zero knowledge protocol, which will enable blockchain to ha uh, help privacy preserving computations. And also, it opens the possibilities of uh, machine learning in blockchain. So with this motivation, uh, we present our work, uh, which is a mechanism to uh, enable uh, computationally intensive contracts in permissionless blockchains with Byzantine and uh, selfish nodes. So this will be the outline of my talk. I'll, go to, uh, I'll next talk about system model, followed by a brief overview of our protocol. Then I'll uh, describe in detail two of our major components, Miracle and Rice, and I'll uh, briefly talk about our evaluations. In system model, like we assume that blockchain consists of nodes, where nodes are either miners or non-miners. I'll explain the role of non-miners shortly. And we assume that at most 50% of the nodes are Byzantine. And we also assume that the underlying blockchain guarantees correctness and availability, where correctness implies that the transactions are executed correctly, and availability implies that the transaction will, be, will get included within a bounded delay. Uh, we define a few things. First, we define computationally intensive transactions or CITs are the transaction that invoke functions that, uh, that require larger computations. We call all other transactions as non-CITs, and we say that the Yoda executes uh, CITs of chain. Uh, that is only by a subset of nodes, and non-CITs non are executed on-chain uh, in, in a legacy, uh, legacy manner. So let's see what off-chain execution means. So give, uh, given a system with nodes, uh, a subset of which are miners, we first uh, divide this set of nodes into two sets, one we call the miners, and another is stakeful. Uh, stakeful consists of nodes uh, that volunteer for CIT execution. This set uh, need not be like mutually exclusive, we can have, even have intersection, but for here we'll just consider a disjoint set. And with this, with, division, with this division in hand, and a block consisting of non-CITs and CITs, 
What will happen, the noise CITs will be executed by the mi uh, miners in a legacy manner, and for each CIT, what we'll do, we'll pick a small subset of nodes from Stateful, which we call execution set, and uh, we'll, we'll ask them to execute the CITs. Once this node execute the uh, CIT, they will submit all of the nodes from N set, will submit the solutions in the uh, blockchain, and miners will identify the correct solution from a set of submitted solutions. In this entire process, what we want, we want and the size of ES to be very small. And we also want that uh, our Yoda should tolerate 50% uh, uh, adversary in the uh, stake pool. And we also want that the correct solution should be identified with a probability one minus beta, where beta is very small. And let's see uh, how, how Yoda meets these requirements. We'll first uh, uh, see our solution in the presence of Byzantine and honest nodes. We'll introduce selfish nodes later. Honest nodes are the nodes that uh, strictly follow the any given protocol. And consider a naive solution using sampling. Uh, so given an SP with uh, Byzantine and honest nodes, what we can do, we can select a large enough ES so that with high probability, majority of the nodes in ES are honest. And if we have this set, uh, we can ask this ES nodes to submit their solution, and we'll, we'll simply take a majority among the uh, submitted solution, and we'll get our answer. But there are several issues with this approach. First is the ES node, required ES nodes is very large. For example, if we start with an SP of 1600 nodes and with worst case Byzantine uh, fraction of 0.35, then we'll require an ES of size 900. Uh, the other uh, issue is uh, this entire process, this, uh, this mechanism is oblivious to the actual fraction of Byzantine nodes in SP. Like for example, if we consider a case where uh, actually there are very less Byzantine nodes in SP, even then, we'll end up selecting a large ES, ES where the best case could have been we select a very small ES. And same uh, applies for a SP where we have no, e uh, no Byzantine nodes, then we can, uh, in the best case, we can work with single uh, ES node. And this observation led us to ask the question, like, can we design an algorithm where, which automatically adapts the actual fraction of Byzantine nodes instead of the worst case? And we designed one such algorithm, which we call Miracle, and I'll uh, <laughs> describe it. So Miracle starts by selecting a small SP uh, using cryptographic sortition, uh, which can have the following scenarios. Uh, case one, the entire ES is honest, like there are no Byzantine nodes in ES, in which case uh, all the ES nodes submits one, uh, one solution, which we denote using D1, and let C1 be the, uh, the frequency of the solution or the number of solutions submitted by the ES node. Uh, we can have case two, where we have Byzantine nodes in ES, and all the Byzantine nodes submits one incorrect solution, D2. And the count of D2 is given by C2. Uh, observe that we select a very small ES, so it, it is possible that the Byzantine nodes are dominating ES. We can have case three, where we have Byzantine nodes, and Byzantine nodes submit multiple different solutions, D2 up to DK, with their respective count C2 up to CK. So it is required that uh, Miracle should be able to identify the correct solutions from a given set of solutions. And I will see, uh, I'll describe a case two in detail. So Given uh, two solutions, D1 and D2, with the respective count C1 and C2, we start by defining two hypotheses. Uh, hypothesis one, uh, which says D1 is the correct solution, and hypothesis two says D2 is the correct solution. Uh, Condition on this hypothesis, we compute likelihood for uh, solution one and solution two using this formula, and once we have this likelihood, we run the following test. We, s we ask uh, whether a likelihood of a given uh, solution is more than a threshold or not. And if it, if it is the case, then we declare the DI as the correct solution. Otherwise, what we do, we go to round two. Uh, in round two, we select one more ES, uh, which we call ES2, and ask them to re-execute uh, the uh, uh, sm uh, smart contract. And let's say this time, they again submit solution D1 and D2 with their respective count delta one and delta two. Uh, with this uh, new information, we recompute the likelihood using this formula, and we rerun the for, for, uh, test again. And if the test passes, then we declare D as the correct solution. Otherwise, we go to round three, and we uh, and so on. In paper, we prove that if we proceed in this manner, uh, Miracle will terminate in expected round given by this formula, which we derive in our paper. Uh, similarly, in case three, where we have multiple solutions, uh, D1 up to Dn, uh, we compute likelihood for each solution and run uh, tests for each of them until uh, the test passes for a uh, given solution, DK, in which case we declare DK as the correct solution. Uh, we also prove some theoretical results in our paper, which uh, are 
First is like we say that miracle terminates with correct solution with probability one minus beta. Uh, we also say that if we have multiple solutions, miracle will only terminate uh, using one, selecting one correct solution. And we also say that from an adversary's point of view, case two is better than case three. Like if adversary wants to accept, mir like make miracle accept wrong solution, he should submit only single incorrect solution. Uh, so this is a graph where we, uh, we demonstrate the adaptive behavior of the miracle. Uh, here we design a system uh, and where we want miracle to terminate in five rounds where the, when the situation is like uh, the adversary is compromising 45% of the nodes and then we vary the actual friction of Byzantine nodes in SP and we see uh, when the actual friction of Byzantine nodes is less than 30%, miracle terminates in one round instead of taking the design five rounds. So this demonstrates the adaptive behavior of the miracle. Uh, so now I will introduce selfish nodes in SP. Uh, like we have so far consi only considered the Byzantine and honest nodes. So briefly, uh, selfish node uh, seeks to maximize uh, reward of computation minus cost of computation. And they try to skip uh, the computation if they can uh, guess the CIC result before end. And how they will guess? They will use information available in the blockchain or they, they may collude with other nodes in ES. And we, I'll first demonstrate that miracle is not sufficient when we consider selfish node and we need some other mechanism. So let's see a scenario where this is the situation in uh, round one. The likelihood of no solution crosses the threshold, but the likelihood of the case solution is maximum. And in miracle, it is, uh, it is often the case uh, that the, uh, the solution with highest likelihood in the first round uh, turns out to be the correct solution. And then what will happen in like a node in ES2 will be able to observe this situation in the blockchain because everything in the blockchain are public. And what he will do, since CICs are deterministic, he will simply replay the uh, KS solution. And uh, all other uh, selfish nodes will do the same. And this th this uh, uh, adds a bias towards the K KS solution and which Miracle did not consider. And if the KS solution is indeed incorrect solution, that it increases the probability of accepting incorrect solution. So we need additional mechanism to handle the scenario. And for that, we introduced RISE, which stands for a randomness in inserted contract execution, which goes as follows. In RISE, we ask ES nodes to submit a solution, D concatenated by a pseudo-random string, uh, where D is the solution of the CIT, which is the final state after execution, and CD is a round-dependent pseudo-random value, uh, which we compute as follows. Let's uh, consider instruction when executed to be events, and this uh, sequence of uh, events uh, define a trace, and let's this, this be the trace of the entire CIT execution, then uh, how, in every round, we provide the ES nodes with a pseudo-random string called seed, and depending upon the seed, uh, we ask these ES nodes to uh, pick an arbitrary subset of uh, indices from this execution trace, and we ask them to update the seed based on the int intermediate state of the contract after this instruction, uh, this indices. And in round two, we give them a different, different pseudo-random string, uh, which, let, which leads to a set of different set of uh, intermediate indices in the second round, which leads to a different uh, seed value. And so this, this ensures that the, uh, uh, the ES nodes from one round won't be able to copy the results from uh, uh, the previous round. Uh, since we don't expect uh, the ES nodes to store the entire execution trees, uh, we do it sequentially. Like based on the initial seed, we pick the next index uh, to update the seed and ask the ES nodes to execute up to the next index. And once they execute it, we update the seed using a hash of the previous seed and the intermediate state after that index. And using this new seed, we, we compute the next index to update the seed and we do it until uh, the uh, execution ends. Uh, so choosing uh, indices in RISE is important because every indices adds o over it because we have to stop the execution and update the seed and resume the execution. Uh, so we want to keep the number of updates small. And so this trivially rules out the possibilities like, uh, uh, of updating the seed after every fix, uh, interval of fixed size because it will add order, order of t over it, where t is the size of the execution trace. Uh, the another extreme is like doubling the interval size after every update. Uh, it will give us log t updates, but the issue is the second last update can be at most t by two far away from the end, in which case, uh, yes, node will be able to skip the last uh, interval because the last uh, the last uh, state of the CIC is already available in the blockchain. So we we choose a state in between 
We choose a hybrid of this approach where we pick i interval of size 2 power i, which goes as follows. We pick one interval of size 2 power 1, we pick two interval of size 2 power 2, and then we take three interval of size uh, yes, uh, 2 power 3, and so on. And we show in a paper, and then if we do in this manner, like we have order of uh, log square t updates, and the last gap becomes uh, t by log t instead of t by 2. Uh, so we evaluated, implemented uh, a entire reorder using EVM, and then uh, we have uh, uh, run CIT consuming up to 50, milli 50 billion gas. And we have also executed parallel, up to 16 parallel CICs in Ethereum. Uh, explaining this graph will require more details, so I'll, I won't go to the details due to time. Uh, additionally, we have presented in our paper security properties of Miracle and Right. We have uh, also considered collusion among ES nodes from the same round. Uh, we also pre give a fair a reward mechanism and prove that this reward mechanism is incentive compatible considering selfish behavior. And we also give a more implementation and evaluation detail. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for short questions. Uh, Pinchen from Lancaster University, still in EU. Um, and, and you have some uh, benchmark, and you said the size of ES is around 40. Uh, is it per round or the total? It's, it's, it's per round, yes. Per round, usually how many rounds do you require? Uh, so uh, what happens, like, uh, maybe I can go back. I have one graph, <laughs> maybe. So what happens, like, you can uh, decide the number of rounds you want to take to terminate. Like, if you pick shorter rounds, and then it, you, you will require larger ES. But what happens is like if you go with larger rounds, say five rounds, we, in the worst case, like where the adversary is compromising the maximum po possible fraction, then what happens is like w if the adversary is actually compromising f very few nodes, you will terminate very quickly. Like we show a graph where we design with five rounds in the worst case, but for the, max, uh, like for the average case, we terminate in one round with ES size like around 40, yes. Okay, thanks. So any other questions? Come on, guys, please. One question. No one? Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes.